Okay. Good morning, Revolution. Scott, Scott, hey, how are you? Doing well. How are you, Joe? Hey, man, I'm living large in the city. Uh, yeah. Not really the all that. <laughs> Being a poor working class guy. Do you think "Good Morning Revolution" is a sectarian um, greeting? You know, I don't. I don't think so at all. I think it's. A, I think it's a necessary greeting. You know, we've. Um, one of the things that distinguishes our analysis is that we recognize the need for revolution, for a change in the the class basis of power. Take it away from the big bankers and the 0.1 percent and the one percent, and give it to the working class. Um, and that's we'd like to do that peacefully, right? That's yeah, uh, that's our goal. If, yeah. if there's violence, it's going to come from them, and we're going to meet it with organization and solidarity. And absolutely. And on that point, you know, I had an interesting conversation with a friend, and she she said that um, because I had used the words "fight fire with fire," but I said a different kind of fire, <laughs> and she thought that I was had another meaning, and she was. <laughs> Yo, you cannot use the weapons that the ruling class uses um, and uh, fight with them, mm -hmm. and, uh, which is an inter So we got into an interesting exchange about that, and maybe we could talk about that, you know, sometime. Yeah, definitely. Because, um, you know, <clears throat> I'm of the opinion that you have to use uh, all of the tools that are uh, available to you, uh, avoiding, of course, uh, provocations and uh, attacks on, uh, you know, in a military terroristic kinds of way. We don't want to have no, no part of, uh, of that. And, uh, and if you, I mean, the more I think about this stuff, the more I look to the example of, of Reconstruction, which was really a great revolutionary moment in our, our history. It didn't fully come to fruition. It didn't, you know, achieve its full potential. Yeah. And, counter-revolution swept in, but um, it was, uh, the, the, the fight for equality was furthered by using the um, Union Army and the power of the federal government to supervise um, the uh, application of the 13th and 14th Amendments, yeah. um, and 15th as well. Right. Um, yeah, uh, so. Go on. And it, so it was an it was an act of force. There was there was violence involved, but it was not you know uh, terroristic, uh, vigilante, you know whatever. It was you know the working class or the the the, the democratic forces used the power of the state to advance their interests. Yes, and of course we have to add that we want to avoid that we're working to avoid civil war. Yes, war would be a tragedy. Yes, it would it would it would, it would uh, ruin the lives of millions and wreck the economy and God knows uh, uh, what else. Uh, uh, but the uh, uh, and the right wing is pushing for it, which is enough reason to <laughs> to avoid it. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, if they don't do that, they might try to secede again. But let's <laughs> uh, go there. Um, so uh, we have, uh, you got some letters from a young student who was interested in the relationship between politics and ideas and change. Yeah. What did she, what was on her mind? So um, yeah, high school junior uh, wrote to us asking about um, what the cause of poverty is, uh, whether it can be uh, eliminated under capitalism and uh, what kind of political ideology is necessary. Uh, to eliminate poverty. And that's a question that we think and, and talk about a lot. It's maybe in a certain sense, the key question, um, you know, how do we uh, provide a uh, work for a better life for, for working class people, a fair society? No, what do you think? Poverty is caused by capitalism. It's a necessary byproduct of it, you know. In order to make a profit, the capitalists have to hold down and push down the uh, wages. Uh, mm -hmm. They want a biggest, the biggest possible share of the working day. And the only way that they can get it is by reducing the wages that workers make, you know, and at the same time, they create necessarily a what Marx called a reserve army of the unemployed. Unemployment yep. is a byproduct of capitalism. Uh, on, on both. So uh, one of the points uh, he makes in capital is that 
you know, arguing against already against, you know, people who are saying, oh, the capitalists are the job creators, you know, the more the economy grows, the better things will be for the working class. Right. He said, actually, no, he made a, 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 I think a stunningly accurate prediction. He said that the more the accumulation of capital advances, um, the more the working class will be driven into both overwork for the employed section and unemployment and underemployment uh, for the rest. Uh, lower wages and, and poverty. And that's what we've seen, especially since 1980 uh, in this country, just a continual degradation. Uh, rise of productivity yep. tremendously, but a flattening of wages and an overall increase in uh, poverty. Yeah, what people talk about yeah, the, ride, the fall in the unemployment rate or a little uptick in wages, but compared to the, the economic growth that we've seen, none of it has gone to the working class at all. And in addition, we've, we've lost all of these um, uh, sort of social programs and sort of um, uh, safety net uh, programs that Absolutely. were helping people. Um, yeah, it was welfare deformed back in, uh, back in uh, the Clinton years. So what else, do, did uh, any other questions that she had? Yeah, on so, um, what, what kind of ideology uh, do we need to, uh, to fix the problem? Well, I think we need a working class revolutionary uh, ideology that puts the working class and poor first. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but it's, I think it needs to be more than working class and more than revolutionary. Even those two conditions, while important, are not enough. It has to be a, a scientific uh, a system of ideas, which means that it has to be a materialist uh, system of ideas that is based on uh, theory and practice, you know, by, by testing out your work and your theories in real life. And it's so what that means concretely is, you know, we got to start by um, with the idea that poverty is not necessary. It's not a natural, unavoidable condition of our society. It's created by the capitalist class deliberately. Um, and if we want to change it, we have to remove from economic and political power the people that profit from the poverty of others. Right. Uh, that's a necessary precondition to solving it. And uh, your ability to solve it will determine whether or not your ideas are correct. As the great Spinoza said, the criteria of truth is practice. Yep. That idea was greeted by Marx and Engels, uh, and 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 they quoted it and extensively and welcomed it as a as a condition of their materialist dialectical world worldview. Um, that word dialectical is one of those you know eighteen dollar <laughs> words. Uh, maybe one day we can have a conversation about what that uh, means. Yeah, we definitely should. Uh, do we uh, run out of questions? I know we have a limited amount of time. Yeah. Let's talk so, yeah, um, just so we're going to send a, a written response as well with 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 fuller answers. But I think this is a really great um, kind of intro to the topic, and I'm gonna, I want to thank the uh, the student who wrote in uh, for those questions. Uh, in a certain sense, we're going to be discussing uh, that question, the question of the crisis of life facing the working class uh, at our convention, which opens in a week. Um, so exciting stuff. Uh, first convention. I think we're going to have some cups. This one is from the 27th. Wow. And you can go to our website after the convention at uh, cpusa.org. You're going to find buttons. You're going to find t-shirts, posters. There's going to be a lot of stuff, you know, that yeah. uh, memor memorabilia. So and we're, this, co this convention coincides with our 100th anniversary. So the mood is really um, not just you know, the grim necessity of, of confronting the challenges facing the working class, but also a celebration of the working class and of our party and of its role in the struggle for democracy. Happy birthday, Communist Party USA. It's a hundred years of struggle and achievement, you know? Yep. Uh, we, have a, we have a lot to celebrate and uh, nothing to be ashamed of, you know? Absolutely. If it weren't for this party, we wouldn't have uh, Social Security, unemployment compensation, industrial unions, yeah. Um, um, 
big contributions to the fight against racism, uh, beginning with the Scottsboro defendants through the fight for Angela Davis, the fight for the Wilmington 10, for the freedom of Ben Chavis, and so on and so forth. And, and a, a, you know, an idea, an analysis that's um, becoming, I think, clearer and clearer to more and more people that, you know, the fight for the rights of the working class can't be separated from the fight for equality for African Americans or for women or for LGBTQ people. That's an area where, you know, we have in the past made, uh, not been as quick to em uh, embrace uh, the democratic movement as we should have been, but. They're, they're inter interdependent. Yep. You know, they are, as the folks like to say that they intersectional. Uh, they, one uh, depends on the other and both, all of them must be struggled for in combination, in unison. Yeah. That's a very, very, very important uh, thing. So the uh, convention is going to uh, debate uh, our program, our draft program. You can find it at cpusa.org. The convention will be streamed here live on Facebook. You can sign up for it uh, also to, to uh, our Zoom webinar, uh, which will be a little interactive in the sense that you'll be able to comment and we'll be able to uh, see it. And it'll also be streamed on, uh, on uh, uh, YouTube. Uh, uh, so we'll be debating, the pro we wanna hear your views about the, uh, our program uh, and our, our workshops. And uh, we were gonna have a beautiful 100th anniversary celebration uh, Saturday I'm night. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's gonna be great. And so if you're not a delegate or an invited guest, you'll be able to participate in that way. And we're looking forward to it. And after the convention, what? Um, more well, activity? More, um, more of the same, but better? Uh, I don't know. Um, I think it's but, gotta be a whole lot better. The party is growing, but there's a big need for us to take initiative, you know, yeah. um, to be more public. Yeah. Uh, to run more candidates, city council, school board, dog catcher, what have you, state representative. We got to be uh, in it to uh, win it, you know. The, no, there's the, this idea that the party is, you know, uh, that the, the American people aren't ready for, you know, a public communist party or uh, that it would be. I, I think I think that's a lot of nonsense. This our party is part of the political life of this country and, and has been since our founding. And Absolutely. Uh, and we are, are gonna stay there. Um, ain't no getting rid of us. <laughs> and, uh, ain't no stopping us, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. uh, we encourage you to join us uh, in this uh, great working class uh, and democratic struggle and uh, enterprise. Well, I think that that just about uh, does it. I know if your babysitter is leaving. Yeah, you, yep, I gotta go down and uh, uh, relieve her. Um, so say hello to Lucia. We will see everybody uh, in Chicago uh, next week. Um, and uh, I had one last uh, thought. Protest the uh, provocation uh, in uh, against, uh, it looks like, uh, Iran. Against Iran, yeah. Um, you know, there was a, a tanker, uh, an oil tanker that was uh, destroyed, um, I believe, in the, the Straits of Hormuz. Um, and uh, the response of the Trump regime and the ruling class was to, you know, leap for Iran immediately. They must be the culprits. Um, this is, you know, it, it's, a, it's an old pattern. You know, remember the Maine in World War One, the Gulf of Tonkin in Vietnam, like the the cause of the working class is peace. The interest of the working class is, is peace and we cannot afford uh, a war. The only war we can afford is a war on poverty. <laughs> you got the last word, Scott. All right, yeah. see you later. Bye. -bye.